Hey guys, today we're going to answer the question, what is prayer and how do I pray? This is a great question. Prayer is something that gets brought up a lot in our world. You might hear in times of need or, or an emergency or when um, maybe a family member is sick, people are going to say, hey, I'll pray for you or how can I be praying for you? People in today's world use those phrases so casually that we don't even stop to consider what prayer is and how we should do it. Let's start here. Prayer is our communication with God. When we're communicating with God in prayer, we do a few different things. One of the things we do is admitting that we need help and asking him for it. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. When I worked at camp, we had this game called the blind maze. The participants get blindfolded and taken into a maze. The maze is made of a rope that is tied to a bunch of trees. Your hand gets placed on the rope and it can't get taken off. And the goal is to find your way out of the maze. Here's the thing though, the maze is a never ending loop. So you can't find your way out, but you're told that you can ask questions. Constantly throughout the entire maze, there is an instructor that says, hey, if you have a question, just raise your hand. And the trick is, that's how you get out of the maze. You simply raise your hand and say, hey, I need help. How do I get out of the maze? That's what prayer is. It's the simple act of acknowledging what Jesus says in John 15, that apart from him, we can do nothing. All we have to do is raise our hand, admit that we need God's help, and ask him for it. And he is faithful to guide our steps. Another thing we do in prayer is praise him and give him thanks. It's like this. Think about your favorite meal that your parents cook for you. For me, it's pink plate tacos. And I know what you're thinking. What is a pink plate? It's this giant serving plate. It's like this big and you have all these different taco supplies in it. And it is so, so good. It is easily my favorite meal that my mom cooks. And so naturally when I go home, it is the top meal that I ask her to cook for me and I can't help but thank her every time we have it. That's because excellent things naturally call for praise. Psalm 100 is a great example of this. In verses five and six, the psalmist writes, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. And you know what's so cool about that? Is the more I recognize how good my mom's tacos are, the more I ask her to cook for me. And she proves to be excellent at cooking every single time. And the same is true with God. He was faithful yesterday, he is faithful today, and he will be faithful tomorrow. So how do we pray? We pray according to God's will and not our own. That phrase God's will gets thrown around a lot in church. And here's what I mean by that. God's will is simply his intentions, desires, plans, and purposes. Jesus shows us a great example of this in the Garden of Gethsemane. In Matthew 26, he makes a request of God. Three times he prays this, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus is the only one who deserves to have his prayers answered. He was the perfect man, the only one who loved God with all his soul, with all his heart, and with all his mind. He completely fulfilled the law of God. And good thing that Jesus prayed those last words, not as I will, but as you will, so that he did fulfill God's perfect plan to die on the cross and save us from our sins. By doing that, he showed us the perfect example of what it looks like to make requests of God while having complete trust in his perfect will. And if you're still thinking, yeah, Ryan, that makes sense, but what do I say? Then let me just encourage you with this one simple thing. Go to God's word and pray a passage. Here's an example. I have family members that don't believe in Jesus and I pray for them often. So what I do is pray Ezekiel 11:19, 19, and I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And I finish with God, I trust you. You do what you want because you know what way is best. So to answer the question, what is prayer and how do we pray? It's our communication with God and we pray according to God's will and not our own. And now let me ask you a question. Are you willing to admit that apart from Jesus, you can do nothing and that you need God's help every 